It's winter in southern Alberta. Hard to believe that any animal can survive these harsh, sub-zero conditions for long. Yet buried in the mud beneath this frozen oxbow pond, and in crevices hidden beneath these wind-blown slopes, ectothermic reptiles survive patiently awaiting the arrival of spring. Our seasons are driven by the tilt of the Earth as we orbit around the Sun. A recurring annual journey that sets the rhythm of all life in the natural world. But on March 21st, we reach a turning point. On this day, the daylight hours are equal in length to those of the night. The seasons are changing. In southern Alberta, spring has now officially arrived. From here until midsummer, the number of daylight hours will steadily increase. Hibernating mammals begin venturing out of their burrows and migrating birds return to this part of the world. Southern Alberta's river valleys and coulees are also places where you will find wetlands and dry sunny slopes. Reptiles are sensitive to atmospheric changes and soon begin to stir. Looking like they belong to earlier times, these reptiles have lived here for millennia. And according to the fossil record, painted turtles have lived in North America for at least 15 million years. As the outside temperatures continue to rise, prairie rattlesnakes begin emerging from their overwintering den, where they have spent the last five months in brumation, far below the frost line. During this time, their growth, development and physical activity temporarily ceased. They are ectotherms, reliant on external sources to regulate their body temperature. So they will spend the next few weeks here, soaking up the sun's heat and gradually becoming more active. Meanwhile, in this shallow wetland, the western painted turtle, the most widespread of all North American turtles, also begin to stir. They are stiff and lethargic from a winter spent submerged in the mud beneath this pond. During that time, they haven't eaten or even breathed. Instead, they absorbed a limited amount of oxygen through their skin. Just enough to keep them alive. Now they gradually begin to free themselves, and as they reach the surface, take their first breath of fresh air in months. Still stained with mud from their winter hibernation, they begin seeking out safe places to bask. Like the rattlesnakes, they need to get their bodies warm again. This year, the river water level is low. And since this wetland is fed by the river, its level is low too.
but the shallow water provides ideal spots for the smaller turtles to bask. Albeit creating more of a challenge for the larger ones. Back at the snake hibernaculum, we see that it is not used exclusively by rattlesnakes. Sometimes they are shared with other snakes, such as bull snakes and these western terrestrial garter snakes. Although this species of garter snake is the least common in Alberta, it is the one you are most likely to find here. The male garter snakes, which are smaller than the females, will be the first out of the den. And because it's spring, they have only one thing on their mind. Here they wait for the females to emerge, and as they do, the females will signal their readiness to mate by emitting pheromones, which the males can immediately detect. The females will only mate once, so competition between males is fierce. After mating, this female heads off to her summer hunting grounds, while the males remain at the den site, until they are sure that all of the females have left. This pregnant female will now retain the eggs in her body during a two to three month gestation period. She will then give birth to anywhere up to 20 live young which she will then leave to fend for themselves. This is also the time of year that female rattlesnakes become pregnant. After storing the male sperm in her body all winter, she will now use it to fertilize her eggs. She will then leave the hibernaculum to seek out a suitable birthing den where she will spend the summer months basking, ensuring her body temperature remains high enough to sustain the development of her young. She will not eat again now until she has given birth, during which time she will lose up to 40% of her body weight. And for this reason, she may not become pregnant again for another three or four years. Females that are not pregnant will now head out too, spending their summer hunting and perhaps breeding. As the mornings heat up, turtles emerge from the water to bask. Once sufficiently warmed, they return to the water to forage. After eating and becoming chilled, they return for one or two more cycles of basking and feeding. Western painted turtles mate in spring and autumn, and between late spring and midsummer, Females will leave this pond to dig nests in the surrounding ground. Older females may lay up to 12 eggs, which will take another 80 days to hatch. Gender is determined by incubation temperature. Temperatures between 23 and 27 degrees Celsius will produce males, while anything above or below this range will produce females. The garter snakes, meanwhile, are also heading out to hunt. Although they enjoy a varied diet, fish is something they seem to enjoy. 
All snakes are very good swimmers, and garter snakes are no exception. Holding its breath for several minutes at a time, this garter snake is able to hide under a submerged rock, where it waits for the right opportunity to strike. Shallow water works to its advantage. It not only concentrates the fish, making them easier to catch, but when the garter snake needs to breathe, it only has to lift its head out of the water before resuming its hunting. The successful hunter, however, doesn't always eat its catch underwater. Sometimes, it's just as easy to bring it to the shoreline. The sun has now reached its highest point, marking the beginning of summer in the Old Man River Valley, creating ideal conditions for basking reptiles. Less numerous than either rattlesnakes or garter snakes, there are also bull snakes in this river valley. A subspecies of the gopher snake, the bull snake is a non venomous constrictor that can grow up to two and a half meters in length. A master of camouflage, the bull snake is not always easily seen yet largely due to habitat loss, its population is now thought to be in decline. Bull snakes are skilled climbers, and in the spring they can sometimes be found in the trees along this river valley, where they hunt for birds, eggs, and nestlings. However, rodents, such as mice, voles, and pocket gophers, also make up a large part of their diet. The City of Lethbridge Wastewater Treatment Plant is located in the heart of the Old Man River Valley. Some of its buildings are constructed on floating concrete slabs, where gaps beneath them create homes for a resident population of bull snakes. With adequate shelter and a plentiful food source, these bull snakes are provided with idyllic conditions and appear quite content to remain here. After mating in the spring, this female will then spend her time hunting before moving to a nesting site sometime in June. There she will shed her skin and lay her eggs before abandoning them shortly after. At birth, garter snakes are only about 15 centimeters long. So throughout the year, they will shed their skin to accommodate their growing bodies. This female rattlesnake is also shedding her skin. This process will take between 7 and 10 days. And during this time, lymph fluid collecting under her skin causes her scales to appear dull and her eyes to become a cloudy blue, rendering her almost completely blind. Although this makes her vulnerable to predators, because she is a pit viper, she will use her heat-sensing facial pits, located between her eyes and nostrils, to detect both predators and prey. After shedding is complete, she will then give birth to live young, which she will protect by coiling her body around them. She will then stay with her young until they have shed their skin for the first time, 
likely in the next two weeks. Painted turtles also continue to grow throughout the summer months, and as they do, they too will shed the skin on their legs and neck. They will also shed parts of their shell. The shell is composed of about 60 bones that are covered with a thin layer of epithelium, a keratin-like substance known as scutes. Scutes protect the individual bones of the shell, and as the turtles grow, old scutes peel off to be replaced by larger ones. This allows the shell to grow, while ensuring that it doesn't become too thick and heavy for the turtle to carry. The plastron pattern on the underside of its shell is unique. While the stripes within the pattern can become more complex with age, the overall shape and distinctive features will remain throughout its life. Between August and September, the young turtles will begin to hatch. While some will make their way to the pond, others will overwinter in their nests before heading to the pond in the spring of the following year. But they will face a high mortality rate. The probability of a painted turtle surviving to its first birthday is only about 20%. Yet those that do survive to adulthood could live for more than 50 years. Back at the wastewater treatment plant, there are young bull snakes that have now hatched. If there is sufficient habitat for the neonates to join the resident population, then they will remain here. Otherwise, they may have to venture out and establish a territory of their own. In early September, the rattlesnakes begin migrating back to their hibernaculum. Rattlesnakes demonstrate extremely high rates of densite fidelity with 95% of them returning to the same overwintering dens they used the previous year. If the weather is favorable, they will continue to congregate here and catch the last of the sun's warmth. Along with the returning adults, some of this year's neonates have also found a sheltered place to spend the winter. But like the young painted turtles, they too will face a high mortality rate, with perhaps only about 20% making it through their first winter. In preparation for brumation, the rattlesnakes will now stop eating. They require a high body temperature to digest food, and since the weather at this time of year can be unpredictable, any undigested food could prove fatal. As the fall equinox arrives, the number of daylight hours begins to grow shorter, and falling temperatures now make the nights cooler. In the days that follow, the snakes will begin to spend more time below ground. While in the wetlands, the turtles too will spend less time basking and soon begin returning to the mud at the bottom of the ponds where they will once more spend the winter. The fall colors of the cottonwood trees in the river valley are now signaling that reptile season in southern Alberta is quickly drawing to a close. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, 
please feel free to leave a comment, perhaps telling me what you like best about it. And while you're there, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button, because there's plenty more to come. In the meantime, here's a quick preview of some of the other videos you'll find on this channel.